Hello, Cole here with, I believe this is the 11th midweek message from Selkirk United Church. It might be the 12th, I'm losing track. But I'm very thankful for this technology that has allowed me to keep connecting with so many of you each week. Thank you so much for continuing to tune in. And not only to tune in, but to send along your comments and your encouragement and your questions. And special thanks to those who are reaching out to others in our church family and beyond. There is so much pastoral care among you all and good neighborliness. Is that a word? I think so. It's so inspiring to hear that you are all being the church, even when we have to be away from church. So I have to start out with the best news first. Most of you will know that our youth group had their big event last Sunday, along with Chris's help. They'd been planning it for over a month, I think. They wanted to do something for the food bank. So they came up with a fundraising idea, a scavenger hunt, in which they went around picking up donations of food and money from households who had arranged in advance to have things ready for the big day. While it was a huge success, monumental success, let me read to you the email I got with the final totals. With thanks to the generous congregation of Selkirk United Church and the participation of the youth who were able to join the scavenger hunt, we will be sending a check to the Selkirk Food Bank for $2,520. Wow and wow. Way to go, Selkirk United. I'm so proud to be part of this church. Me too. What a great job. Thanks so much to the youth and to all of you who made donations. There was approximately 250 pounds of food to go along with the cash donations. What a great story for this week and so needed. Speaking of our young people, this coming Sunday, June 7th, will be our Sunday School wind-up. And although we can't have our normal wind-up day with a big celebration at the church, we are still going to celebrate the year that has been. And there are many things to celebrate, even though there have certainly been challenges too. So a year in review is being prepared, along with some pictures from many of the events that have taken place throughout the year. And there will still be a time to give thanks to all the leaders and helpers for all that they have done for and with our youth and children over this past church year. So that will be coming this Sunday. Also on Sunday, it's time for our Holy Humor Sunday. So it's going to be a very special service. It might seem like a bit of a disconnect to have Holy Humor Sunday and to be celebrating our children and youth at a time when we seem to be so surrounded by bad news coming from all over the world. But you know what? I think maybe it's perfect timing, actually. Maybe we can be a bright spot in the midst of all that seems dismal and hopeless and frightening around us. We still need to celebrate the good. And we still need to laugh in the face of hatred and violence and injustice. So that's what we're going to do. I also want to mention that I am going to be away for two of the next three weeks. I'm taking some holiday time, which means that things will look quite different for our online content over the next while. There will still be a service next week that we will borrow from elsewhere. It just won't be what we're used to, but it will be worship. And I hope that you will tune in to see what some of our neighbors and sisters and brothers in Christ are up to in their services. That will be next week. And also the final Sunday in June. I will be back for the third week and the third Sunday of June, the 21st, so things will be more normal that week, or at least what passes for normal these days. In spite of my holidays, please continue to send in your comments and questions and prayer requests, and we will reply to them and answer them and include them as soon as we can. Oh, a reminder about what I said about prayer requests last week. We've had many prayer requests that we've included in our Sunday pastoral prayers over the past few months. Starting this Sunday, though, we are going to do things a little differently. We are going to start fresh at the beginning of every month. So if you'd like someone in the, on the prayer list for June, please send in those names to Chris right away, and we'll make sure that they're added for the June 7th service and following. But the deadline for getting names in for this Sunday is Thursday at noon always Thursday at noon. Okay, speaking of prayer requests, as I said, there have been a lot of those lately, and it's good that we're praying for all of those people and situations that need our prayers these days. But you know what's been missing? Our celebrations. We haven't been hearing very much about people's birthdays or anniversaries or other good news that people sometimes share during our regular church services in the sanctuary. So let's rectify that. 
this is an invitation to all of you to send in, along with your prayer requests, your celebrations too. Let us know what you're wanting to celebrate and share with the rest of your church family, and we'll add those into our worship services each Sunday. Let's get a long list of those each week too, if we can. Send them in. Again, the deadline for making it into the Sunday service each week will be Thursday at noon. Finally, I'm sure all of you are troubled by what you're seeing happening in the States these days. I am too. It is a frightening time we live in. It's hard to know what to feel or how to think. I do know that as Christians, we are called to do a couple of things. We are called to pray. That's a pretty easy one and it doesn't really cost us anything. Let's continue to include our neighbors to the South in our prayers, all of them. Let's pray for those who are oppressed, those who have been oppressed for so long that they are giving up hope. Let's pray for change, change to a system that continues to see the gap between the haves and the have-nots grow wider and wider every day. Let's pray for the leaders, all leaders, that they may use their power in appropriate ways, not making things worse, but seeking peaceful solutions, finding ways to dialogue, seeking God's wisdom and God's guidance to help them with the decisions they make each day. Mostly let's pray for peace, and not just peace, but peace that comes with justice, justice for all, but perhaps especially justice for those with whom Jesus always stood, the oppressed, the poor, the voiceless, the outcasts, the ones on the margins who most need someone on their side so that they know that they are not alone. So let's keep praying. There are other things to do. Let's also keep reading, learning, discerning what is truth, seeking reconciliation, standing up and speaking out against injustice when we see it, being critical thinkers, and finding tangible ways to seek justice and resist evil and help those who need our help in all the ways we can, in all the places we can. And may God be with us as we do. That's all for today. God bless each and every one of you. Stay safe and keep well and reach out to us and others whenever you need to know that you are not alone. We're with you and God is with you too. See you next time.